Howdy, me fellow Bart here, and no, I wasn't picking my nose. Um, and welcome, yeah, so, um, the Halloween challenge, I'm going to be working on my template, and, um, got to answer some questions here and there about the Halloween challenge, Fright Night, and about, you know, other stuff as well as I can. So, come on in, sit down, prop your feet up, get you something to drink, and let's get to work. Uh, my usual cocktail, Orange Crush and um, Alka Seltzer Cold Formula, Orange Zest. All right, so still got to work on my main menu. I, I need to focus in on it more. Uh, you know, other than just having the words there, I'm going to change around this this whole setup. Probably going to keep the basic layout but I'm going to change around a little bit and I will be adding another option in which would be for options so that we can do um, screen resolution and some other changes that way uh, that's been requested so I'm just going to add the placeholder in for it so you'll have main menu single player multiplayer and exit game so the main three buttons are actually going to be single player multiplayer options and exit so I'll have four buttons and I'll rearrange those so that they're probably on this side. Um, I'll get rid of this this orange or red orange. I don't know where I got orange from. Maybe for the fact that I drink enough orange drinks that uh, I'm turning orange. But get rid of that. I don't need it anymore. And that is actually a divider inside of there. Mm, I can get rid of that and I can get rid of that. Because we know this is the main menu. We don't need text saying that it's the main menu. So I can get rid of my divider as well. And the fact that this is anchored to the left-hand side. Um, let's change the anchor to, for right now, right-hand side. And I'm going to rescale it. No, no. Just going to rescale it for now to about like so. And I'm just going to drag it over here. I want it just above the Technoax logo. Now, what, what I'm going to do here is I need to go in and create a new button so that I have one that is for down here. These you won't see naturally when you first go into it. So, um, well, I'll go ahead and put that in. And you'll, you'll see kind of how I'm doing this with the making stuff show up and collapse and all that kind of stuff. So, um, let's go ahead and add in that main button there. With the um, the button that I want to add needs to go in to let's see here. Got exit game. Let's collapse the rest of this stuff. And I don't need to see all these. I could actually copy that button or find. I can copy any of these buttons. Hey, welcome. Yeah. Um. You were asking me about the uh, the your menu bar, your health, and that stuff was showing up here. Um, all you got to do is for your main menu map. You know, mine's called main menu map, but whatever yours will be called. Let's go to your world settings, and I use my own game mode for um, the main menu that I created custom. But just need to make sure that you have default pawn class set to none. And that should take care of it. Uh, that way, you're not showing your um, your health, hunger, and thirst, and that kind of stuff in there. So that's you know just that's easy enough. So in your menu, you don't have a character. You're not controlling anything. So if I hit play, and I'm showing this in standalone. Again, my project's running off of Steam, so for the multiplayer, it, it's going to work that way. Um, yeah, I'm still rearranging these things here. But the um, come on, yes, we know we can access the Steam community. So you can see I don't have a character at all. It does show my Steam username and avatar in upper right hand corner, and you got you know the main logo here. I'll put some other graphics in the background, and I'll make it, all the rest of it look nice and neat. Let's go to multiplayer and host and create a game. I'm going to change all these menus around to make it more suitable for this environment. And then make, and then there you go, go into the actual, this is my demo map, but go in there and 
do your thing. That's kind of gruesome, isn't it? And again, I have to qualify. She's not eating her crotch. She's eating her stomach. Okay. I'm a pervert, but not that much. So. <laughs> But yeah, I just wanted to play around with some of these animations, and I've got them um, tied in with the Cindy Studios assets. Um, these guys did not want to cooperate with my usual method, so I had to, to use the same method, but give them their own private skeleton for some reason, and it still works fine. I can make them do whatever animation that I want, and actually this guy right here is actually an NPC, so if I wanted to, I could actually main menu and exit, exit, exit. I'm going to have to go into the main menu here and make sure that it, and see that the graphic is overlapping. So for now, I'm just going to move this up just to her. I'll probably see about changing the fonts and doing that kind of stuff too. But you take it off a default pawn and you don't want any, any pawn whatsoever. And default pawn class is set to none. If it's already set to none, then you're looking at, um, well, let's see something here. I could open up multiple projects at once. My potatoes is fried up pretty good, so it does pretty good. Um, it's a Rebel demo. I've got a, a demo that I've already started working with. Um, the demo is, is playable and is linked on my Discord channel under the bbg demos that's gonna take a little bit to, to load up here since i've already got a project open so i'm running two projects at once <laughs> if you see that i'm still running that one but um as you can see whenever i go into my menu no um, i i take questions and answers all the time so and that's just part of what i do um so again, I will do the same thing. I will go into my main menu and I'll play it in standalone game. So you can see I don't have that problem with my my health bar or anything showing up in here. So very simple menu. Like I said, I, I built this as a quick demo for for us testing internally, but I shared it with other people to play with. So you can do you know host and find on multiplayer, or you can just go in a single player and play it that way. You see, I don't have to, to. I don't have the the bar right there. Again, it's a matter of making sure your game mode is set up correctly so that you don't have a a, a character in the main menu. So it always takes forever to load whenever it's in the um, the editor, but in the the actual compiled version, which I could have just done that as well. Um, but come on, load. I'm, I'm I'm old. I don't have time. Should have only got a couple days for the damn hurricane destroys everything any damn way. So hurry up. It's loading. I promise. Because if I to see if it's actually hung up or moving or whatever, you grab the the window and try to move it. And if it doesn't move, then it's actually still loading. That's my test. Here's the thing, though. If you're going to do multiplayer, you need to start building the functionality in now because all the replication is going to be um, no, a pain. So this is just a temporary map that we're working on as well. Um, just throw it in a little pond. You can actually drink the water here and then lay out all the weapons and whatnot, logs, and each of those stacks are 99 logs, and each of those are 99 stone. Um armor, weapons, random spawns, all kind of stuff in here. This is just a demo map for your planet. And that's the thing also is if you're going to create a survival game, you kind of want to have a save game system anyway. And I will be looking more into the save game system. I'll probably do a whole stream just on that because the, um, the survival content has the save game stuff in here if you look in your blueprints and I like the template there's a lot of really cool stuff already in it there just there's so many little bugs they need to hurry up and fix so you got your save game 
Okay. Everything's going to be slow. Because I am running more than one copy of the uh, the editor at one time, so. Their save game system, I really haven't looked at it much. But as far as I know, there wasn't anything in the player character. And you got to have the stuff in the player character as well. Function set up in there. So that you can actually load the save game and save the save game. And if, if you don't have it, you have to set it up to where it checks to see if the, the save game exists. And if it does not, then it needs to create a save game. And unfortunately, probably the best way to go about it is, for a single or multiplayer, is to have the save game saved to the client. So every person who logs in to play the game is actually going to save their game to their own computer. So as you can see, you've got um, inventory components, item saves, storage component saves. So a lot of the stuff is already in here. And they're already set up as arrays. So you're going to have to find all the different arrays. Deleted resource instant transforms. Okay. Um, but master resource saves. you got all this stuff is in the save game. So the character itself, character blueprint, BP survival character, and master character, probably going to have to look in both. Um, and I don't see directly the functions here for save game. And that's why it's, it's not working, I would assume. Yeah, it won't be on world settings. Um, it's going to be in the player blueprint that needs to reference and access that. So let's close that. Close that. Go back just to the event graph. And... You got your multicast, you got your server events, and client events. But I don't see anything inside the um, the player blueprints. Oh, that's not a problem. That actually says access a save game. If we look here in the red, the red is going to be multicast events that are movement related. That's usually what I do is I put red for, for movement or for actions at least. Um, look at rotations and actor rotation, that kind of stuff. Um, got any damage, kill character, bleed damage, on land, begin play. Um, what? Okay, they've got a collapsed graph. Anytime you see a collapsed graph, and I use these all the time, you can actually double click on it and it'll open up that graph. So we look in here and it's just accessing the camera view. When you're ready to go back, just click on Event Graph. Um, so there's nothing in, in Begin Play, which is where that should be. Um, Alright, so the reason why their save game is not working is because there is no reference to it in the, the, the player character system. So what you're going to have to do is... So you got a game mode as well. Let me look in the game mode. and nothing. So the game mode is basically going to point you to the the session, the um, the game state, uh, if you wanted to create your own base, your, your custom game state, uh, player controller that you're they're going to use, the player state, the HUD. Another thing that might be a problem, check your HUD class, make sure that HUD is set to, and for my main menu I create a main menu um, even though I may not show anything in it, it should then just reference the um, your your menu system at that point, or your widget for your menu. So there's nothing directly in here that I see that actually says load save game or save save game. So what I'll do is, for now, I can point you to um, Virtus, uh, the Virtus Learning Channel, or Virtus, Virtus Learning Hub um, on YouTube. He did a, a pretty good one on save games. There are some other good videos that are out there on save games, but essentially inside your player, you need to um, make a reference to your save game. It, essentially, in your player character, you need a function that, that says um, 
that you're you need to check to see if the save game exists and you need to give your save game a name as well um stream goes on and off yeah all my my videos um are automatically saved I'm not showing that I had any drops um f uh, frames here so And it's uh, 19 FPS on the stream, so everything should be good. Um, everything is a little bit slow up here, but yeah, my internet connection is not great. I mean, we're talking about I'm averaging a thousand kilobytes. But yeah, I would say um, for the save game stuff until I get a chance to actually do a video on it. And like I said we're. Um, my city is actually expecting a hurricane to hit us really soon so um, in the next couple of days when the hurricane does hit I'm probably going to be without power for unknown amount of time a week, two weeks, a month I don't know so in fact they've already called for manual, man, mandatory evacuations of my county that I live in but I'm not going anywhere, I can't go anywhere All right, so yeah, on, on your save game, yeah, I appreciate it. On your save game, check versus channel or just do a, a basic YouTube search, and you'll find some good videos. Um, until I get a chance to actually do one, and I will do it in that project to utilize their stuff, try to make it work. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use that template in this project yet or not. Um, I've got a couple other ones that I'm looking at, but that one's got a lot of good stuff in it. It's just I got to do a lot of repairs to it to make it functional correct. The sounds are absolutely screwed up. Um, the one thing that I noticed that all of their reference to all of their sounds refer to a WAV file and not to the actual sound cue. So that's why you're having problems with in multiplayer. If somebody eats and you're two miles away from them on the other side of the friggin' map, you can hear them eating or reloading their weapon or, or scratching their nuts or whatever. There's no sound attenuation because there's no the link for all the sounds on everything was pointing to the wave files and not to the sound cue and the sound cue I had to create my own attenuation and assign the attenuation to all the sound cues that were there but they weren't being used so I created a custom sound cue and I had to go through every item in the item list and everything that I can come up with to redirect their sounds from the wave file to the sound cue so that they have the appropriate sound radius for each item. You don't want to hear a gunshot from 20 miles away. You damn sure don't want to he hear somebody eating a, an apple from 20 miles away. So, yeah, their sounds were an issue. Their weapons descriptions were horrible. Um, yeah, I won't get into that. So, The Halloween challenge is what I'm working on right now. And let me actually go into... Yeah, I've had to repair a lot of stuff from that asset pack from them. If it wasn't for the fact that there were so many cool things already in there, then I would definitely give it a horrible review, but there's enough good to outweigh the amount of bad. For now. They're fixing it. They're, they got a patch coming soon. So, yeah. Um, try to work on some of the um, the animations, getting them rigged up and, and running. Um, so this project, I'm using all Cinti Studio assets for the characters, all the scenery, all the other stuff just because it's really good stuff. It's lower poly so it'll work on more people's computers and for the map I'm not sure how big a map I'm gonna run for my first map and it's just gonna be all the ambience, getting the um, changing the lighting over to where it's nighttime, changing everything to where it's, it, it has that spooky feel to it and instead of the normal um, foliage from like the the town pack and stuff like that I'm gonna be using the um, the polygon nature pack for my stuff because wow it well they're all gonna match the same theme and everything but the trees oh my god are so much better and the fact that I say that they're so much better I'll drop a couple trees in here just and they're gonna be the wrong size they're not gonna be scaled correctly and you can actually put them into your foliage editor and do it more correctly 
but just want to put a few of them in here just kind of get an idea I'm gonna be more towards the uh, the dark spooky themed ones on this project so I'm gonna put those in just because the, these actually have movement to them I absolutely love that So it's going to help really build that theme. So I'm just going to put a couple of them here and there just to kind of look at them. Now, like I said, this, this map here is nothing but uh, a visual representation of things that are going to be in, in the scenes to see how they're going to look, how they're going to react to the lighting and so forth. You can see that the trees actually have movement to them. So the nature pack, if you're you're working with the Cindy Studio stuff already, um, stuff in, in here, amazing. And although they don't fit into this current theme, got to love that. It just fits really well. Just a nice little bit of subtle movement to it, instead of it just being a static thing. Uh, terrain that you can put in, in your background. Um, so many cool things let's go ahead and bring that up so we can look at it here I haven't uh, done, got all the uh, the shaders compiled yet on, on this asset pack I've only had it in here for a little bit of time so i got to wait till it actually finishes compiling the shaders so I can see it there's a waterfall I'm grab it pull it up Just so we can see it. And the good thing about them is um, they've included a buttload of effects here too. So you could actually grab this and throw that in there. Compile my shaders, damn it. There we go. So you can put that in there at the base of your waterfall. And the heck with it. Let's just put that right there. So that fits pretty well with the overall theme. But they've got some good effects. They've got good trees and stuff like that. But you've also got, um, let's see, grass blowing, leaves. So I'll be using a lot of these um, particle effects that come with it just so that I can really, you know, add a lot of stuff to it. I mean, they've even got butterflies. So. All right, compile my shaders. Hurry up. I'm gonna add a nice effect to it. The leaves blowing and two different color of leaves, and you got um, grass. I could even add some rain in here. Let's take a look at that. You got the rain effect, and of course you can scale it up, and make it fit a larger area as well. But the leaves blowing green and um, orange. By the time you add in fog and you know adjust your lighting and so forth, it'll do a lot for a scene. So for the guys that are going to be partaking in this um, this challenge, definitely say um, if you've got the nature pack, <laughs> you're going to want to use it. If you don't have it. Mm, you can get by without it, but why would you want to? Some snow. Um, I have to look into the um, idea. I saw where somebody had done a uh, snow accumulation thing, where it actually, once it starts snowing, it'll actually accumulate and change the uh, the material and apply snow to the outside of it. I'm not going to worry about that too much. There's a sun shaft. Alright, it's got to compile its shaders again. It's like a ray of, of light from the heavens. 
Cool. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of cool effects you can work with in this particular one here. Um, terrain, you got rocks, props. Um, some of these props are going to work a little bit better than others. Here's a gravestone there. Um, I'm probably also going to go ahead and bring in a couple of the asset packs from Sydney Studios just because there's Sunshaft and, and that. Um, there's more gravestones, uh, skeletons. I guess I could, what I could do is show how I'm going to bring in the other packs. I've already got two packs in here that have characters. Um, the girls that are here, these are the the one of the daughters from the town pack, the skeletons from the nature pack. But what if we want to walk around as a skeleton or, you know, things like that. So to add in another pack, you can either, if you've got them from the marketplace, then essentially you just need to grab your... Um, Epic Launcher and find them in here. Um, I've got a lot of mine directly from the City Studio website, so the way I go about it is a little bit different. So, what I'll do is find a location where I've got them all saved, and I've got all of the City Studios asset packs. So, um, let's add in that's the Rivals Fantasy Character Pack. Wait, I got a fantasy rivals already in here. Fantasy characters. Um, you know what? Why not? I'm going to go ahead and add that in here. And the way I'm doing it is I've actually got them from the store. Uh, fantasy characters. So when you get it and you unpack the RAR file, you're going to have three inside here. You'll get the Unreal, the Unity, and the Source files. I am using Unreal, so I right-click and extract it that way. Come in here, go to the content. Now, you can actually go into the project and migrate the stuff over, but for me, I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way. So I have it extracted, and I see that I'm in the content folder, and that's the folder that I want right there from the content folder. I'm going to go to my project, and my content folder and I'm just going to right click drag and copy here so doing that I've just copied them in and it works just fine so that's the, the one that I just brought in is the fantasy characters so what I'm going to do is actually instead of using the skeleton that came with it what I've done is and I've got retargeting videos on, on doing this all over the place I have already taken and made my own polyskeleton and all I did was I went to one of the asset packs that has a skeleton in it and then all I did was I drug a copy of it over, renamed it and I'm just using a copy of one of the Cinti Studios um, skeletons so now all I gotta do is just control left click on all the skeletal meshes from this asset pack and I want to add them in I have everything from Cindy Studios. They're like crack, man. They need to hurry up with that new freaking asset pack. Damn it. They're teasing us on Facebook, but come on, I want it. I need it. It's my, my junkie fix, man. So I've got all of them selected and right click, skeleton, assign skeleton, and I'm going to go with my poly skeleton. Now, this is the one that I created or, or modified to use for the, um, the, the big guys, but. This is the one that I use for all of the, the normal ones, the normal humans. So you can actually use that one as a, um, a good reference. If it's good enough for the creator of the asset packs to use my videos, then uh, good enough for, for us, right? The animations, um, essentially... Um, I've compiled a buttload of animations from countless asset packs from all over the place that are already targeted to the Cindy Studio, not, not Cindy Studios, to the um, actual 
um, uh, the UE4 mannequin. So all I, I do is I just drag them into the project. Yeah, I definitely need to take a look at that Egypt pack. That's that's going to be pretty cool. Um, that would go pretty well with the uh, the Hadrian steam thing we were doing earlier, also using that uh, that combat system. It's a shame though it's not replicated. So now I've got all these characters here, and they're already bound to my new new one. So like right now, let's go ahead and do a quick um, build. Um, if I want to use any of these characters with my existing player character, or with um, yes, yes, I know there's there's um, it needs to be lighting rebuild done. It's doing it. Shut up and wait. Are you done now? Thank you. So right now, if I wanted to to no longer be the the dad character from the town pack and I want to be I want to be the I want to feel pretty so I want to be the female witch as an example if I want to be her then all I got to do is change up my player character um, but because I, I retargeted all of these to my existing um, uh, character or existing uh, skeleton it's gonna work so let's go ahead and give an example um, the zombie biting thing okay and that would be well let's go ahead and change our character really quickly and go into it let's go to my viewport so now if I wanted to be that witch or one of the ones from that asset pack I just did no no it's it's beyond super simple Maybe an evil god, or how about um, let's see, female queen. I guess I really wanted to feel pretty. Um, uh, what was one of the ones from there? Spirit demon. Now, if I wanted to be one of the the big guys, the um, the barbarians or the giants, I'm gonna have to change my animation blueprint, which I've already retargeted, but it's not a big deal. I've already got it fixed and set up, like the pig butcher. Um, Cause see, if I do one of those, it's not gonna work, and it's got the wrong thing on here. Um, That's the wrong texture. So I would have to go to the troll animation. It's already set up and working, so I could actually use it. Um, but troll is from fantasy, I do think. Close my main menu for now and play. And now I could be this guy, run around, jump. The shaders haven't finished compiling yet, so he's still gray. But I've already targeted him for that. And yes, I've already scaled them up two times. So, um, but if I wanted to change the, uh, the to get another character to do that animation, let's actually change my player back mesh, and let's go with um, female witch, and go back to my. Um, an armed blueprint or animation blueprint and there we go now now we can be pretty run around as a witch but to for the example biting of the neck thing this one right here this animation if I wanted that one to work on I'll do it for the troll because I, I don't think I've got that one set up well maybe troll other uh, no I've already got it sorry Um, no, pretty much what you see here is all that I've got. Um, no, I don't have a position here just right, but I, I've got more. I just haven't put the rest of them in. Um, I'll have to sort through. Most of it's like combat related, but I need to get some more melee based. Because the ones here... 
So this one, the player or the character or whatever is standing up and then goes to eating a corpse. Then I've got the actual eating corpse um, animation there. A couple death animations. Uh, zombie idle animation. This one is the biting of the neck thing. The scream. The other movements, like that, the, the zombie dragging and walk thing, is not an in-place animation, so I'm not going to use it. Um, essentially, if you're trying to add that in, that particular one right here, so that you could trigger your player to do that and attack somebody, or do this melee attack right here, uh, where they're swinging and, and just smacking the player, or what have you. Um, essentially, when you're looking at your uh, animation blueprint, um, do, 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 other, nope, unarmed, go into your animation blueprint and you're gonna have to add um, um, no actually I got these from I think from Cedraco there <laughs> they are standard UE4 mannequin animations um, all I did was retargeted them to the uh, Cindy Studios ones um, so yeah in the animograph in your state machine where you've got all this stuff right here for for jumping you're gonna have to essentially figure out where you're gonna allow your your player to be able to do it and you don't want them to do that attack while they're on a jump so while they're at idle or running if you're using the standard animation blueprint then all you gotta you're gonna have to do first off is drag off from there and you need to go ahead and add a state and call it um, melee or whatever else it's it's going to be so you want them to be able to enter and exit that animation so you want to go back from that animation system back to the idle run and then you're going to have to create conditions of how do you enter it and how do you exit that so the actual melee if you go into go into it what you're wanting to do there is say uh, find the right animation and it's Okay, we're in the troll. So the troll biting. Um, no, let's do troll attack. So you'd actually drag that in there into the scene and connect the two little guys together. And now this is what's going to happen when it does it. So it's going to play this animation and then roll back to where you were before. So you go back to default and now you're going to have to uh, worry about a, um, a key binding. So and actually I need to do this in a player character. I'm going to take this out of here for now and we can put it in our player character if we wanted to but essentially you're gonna have to create um yeah it looks really good i like it with the regular player but i really love it with the uh the trolls um so when you're setting up your your attacks there um you need to have in your character you need to have a key binding for the attack so you can either create a, a manual key binding or you can just come in here and type in keyboard Actually, no, I don't want a keyboard. Well, I'm just going to type in. If I can't remember what the exact thing is for it, I just use escape. Type in escape and use keyboard event escape. And then what I do is I come back over here and go back to input key. And then I can select, nope, I want it to be mouse, left mouse button. And now there we go. So when we press it, we want it to perform the attack. Um, there's a cheesy way of doing it it's not the correct way and I hate to show this but the correct way is actually you could set up a montage and you can tell it to play that montage and then resume back to your regular animation um, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it but the cheesy method is to play animation no nope. wrong one play animation mesh 
So you just drop that in there. And you select the animation to play. And I'm going to do, uh, let's see, the animation that I want is zombie attack. It's not appropriate. Yeah, this is the cheese method. I, I don't recommend this one. But this is the cheese method of doing it. So you can tell it to play the animation. And then the animation itself, if you mouse over it, it takes 2.633333 seconds to perform the animation. So I'm going to do 2.633 on a delay. You can do the same thing. You can do the same thing. Just tell it what animation to do. And then if you want it to stay in there until you release the key, or you can do it as a flip-flop and just put a flip-flop in line. So put in our delay. We're going to make our delay the length of the animation, 2.633333. And then we want to, from our mesh, Anim instance set animation instance class and then we need to tell it what um, animation instance uh, we're doing which is our unarmed animation blueprint this is absolutely the cheesy method of doing it it is not the correct way to do it but it works so now uh, there we go and I go back to my regular see it's not smooth because it's meant for a different idle animation. It's meant to operate off of that idle animation. So the hand position is not going to be correct. So it's going to work. And you see what's happening is it's doing the animation. And yeah. The bottom half of your body is not cooperating with the top half of your body. You can actually go in there and make that work correctly where... You can either A, make this only work if the player is stopped, or you can make it stop the character completely so they grind to a halt, do the animation, and then can walk again. So you can do it that way, or you can actually do it the correct way and say, okay, um, I want this to work whether the character's walking or not. So if you want to make them stop, then all you're going to have to do is just... Um, um, put in here where you play the animation before all this uh, let's just grab this guy right here drag it out just a little bit and then we want to go from our mesh actually from our character movement and just drag off from there and say disable movement but we need to make sure that we have the enable version So we want to disable, and since we cannot re-enable that way, so let's try um, to deactivate and activate. So now we can actually jump this in line to here. So we're going to deactivate the, the character movement, and then after we set our animation instance uh, back to the correct unarmed or whatever animation it is, it should then allow us to continue moving. So I can't move until I get done, and then now I can move. If I do the attack, it stops me, so I can do the attack, and now I can move again. So I'm holding down on the walk button the whole time. I haven't let go of the walk button. So as soon as I do the attack, it stops my character cold until they finish the attack. So that's the easy way of doing that system, to just do a simple attack without having to do anything with the animation blueprint or anything like that. I said the best way to do it is to use the animation blueprint, use the animation montage and stuff like that. So if you want to attack while you're walking, you're going to have to do a per bone blend, and that gets into a, a whole different th thing. Virtus had a really good video on that, and um, I could just I could make that video be just like what he did, or you can just watch his video, either one. Um, but essentially, what you're going to have to do is go into your um, your animation blueprint, 
and on this one it is unarmed as the one that I'm using for the, the player character um, and go into the anim graph state machine and again you're gonna have to drag off of it tell it to play that animation and how it's gonna play that animation you're gonna have to put into the the event graph of setting the state and referring to the player character and is attacking and that kind of stuff but when you go into the event graph or the anim graph you're gonna have to set up those conditions and it's a pain in the butt to do it that way and you also have to set up in the uh, let's see what was it yeah I'll, I'll get with me later and I'll I'll see it. if you can't find that video from him then I will I will look it up and link it but it's a per uh, bone blend and essentially what you're doing and let's go into the the skeletal mesh here is you're actually telling it to operate from spine one up to blend this animation of the attack animation and from spine one down essentially you're telling it to play a different animation so this is paying you know, the, the bottom half of your body is is following the normal animation sequence but when you perform that attack spine one and everything above it needs to follow the other animation so you're blending two animations together and you can do it that way. There might actually be a way of doing it with an animation montage, but I know that you definitely need to go in there and do a, a per bone blend and do it for each of the bones on the spine so that it's able to actually do that attack. So like I said, the, the bottom half of your body, that whole bottom half of that animation gets ignored, and instead it actually plays the... Um, the normal walking animation or running animation or whatever you were doing so it it's complicated to explain but essentially that's what it is it ignores what the bottom half of the body is doing and just tells this animation to only play from the waist up that's all you really need like I said Virtus did a good job on that video so you know I'd just rather refer you to his video unless you just don't like him I like him he's a good guy but you know I could always do my own version of that video later if, if need be But yeah, setting up the animations with the Cindy Studios characters, um, I don't even have to retarget anything now. Anytime I add these new characters in, all I'm doing is I'm going to the characters folder, selecting the skeletal meshes, and telling them to use... Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I try to... He usually does a pretty good job of his videos, but I, I like to live stream instead of just doing a video and and publishing it so you guys can see whenever I screw something up but you also can ask questions and I can help you along the way um, I actually stopped by uh, Dean Ashford was doing a, a live stream earlier today I stopped in to check him out he's, he's pretty good too um, sending me discord messages while I'm streaming don't make me smack you um, let me go ahead and add some more in here what the heck you know I already got um, the fantasy characters <laughs> the uh, the fantasy rivals nature in town and hopefully I, I do a good job of explaining things too um, I try to at least um, let's see what other asset packs do we want to add in here so the whole point of, of this video is, I, is I'm actually putting together a a Halloween contest but no worries um, the the Fright Night is actually a game that I'm working on with some of the guys on my team and we're also going to be doing this as a contest as well for those who want to join in I did a short video earlier about the uh, the Fright Night uh, um, oh the blood on the ground you're not going to believe how stupidly easy it is to make that the blood splatter if if you only knew and I'm, I'm sure you how easy it is 
I'll grab another one. I don't care. I'll, I'll grab another freaking image and make another damn sprite. How about that? It's a sprite. And making a sprite to apply to something like that is so, so easy. It's actually harder for me to find a texture to actually put into the map. <laughs> So I've already done the blood, and it's going to be the same process. the The blood itself, which I will show you here, is right click. I'll edit with GIMP. I'll actually load GIMP up. It's a blood splatter that I just I did a Google search for it and found a blood splatter, and um, it was already set on a transparency on the background. And I'll load up GIMP, and GIMP is a free graphics program in case you didn't know. Um, but I can bring in like U.S. flag or U.K. flag or whatever else. Or I can just quickly modify this one. So say we'll get rid of the little tails right here. So this is the actual image, and I don't need that up here. Um, it's got a transparent background, a PNG format. Um, if you're going to do any kind of graphics editing for uh, Unreal, PNG, Papa November Golf. I'm actually going to come in here and grab my lasso. I'm going to zoom in. I'm just going to make a modification to this one. And we'll just use this same principle here. All I'm going to do is just come over here and I'm just going to cut off that one. So I can get rid of these long pigtails. I wanted to do this anyway so I could have a version without those pigtails. I call them pigtails, but these two legs that are coming down on the blood trail. But, I mean, you could make your own. All I'm going to do now is just hit the delete key and unselect that. So we've got this PNG right here, and I'll actually go in here and I'll just crop it out a little bit. And I'm just going to make another image. I'm going to hit Control C, Control Shift V to paste it as a new image. Discard the old one because I didn't really need to save anything on it. So now we have a blood splatter that is on top of a transparent layer. Yeah, I mean, I've just got GIMP, that's all I use. So then I'm going to hit Control Shift and E, which is going to allow me to save it. And I'm going to call this Blood and hit Export, I'm saving as PNG, leaving all this default. Export and now I can actually close it. I don't need it open anymore. So now I can actually go to my fart night, I mean, my fright night um, folder, wherever the hell it is. Um, so much shite to deal with. And then I'm going to grab the folder I want it to go into assets, sprite. And see, that's the one we already have. And all I'm going to do is just left click and drag it into the um, the scene right here, or the uh, the editor, and it's it's there. All I did was just drag it in. Then I'm going to right click on it and go to Sprite Actions, Create Sprite, Save All. I know this is complicated, but you know. So now we'll come over here and let's put some blood underneath the um, the the skeleton. So this blood sprite we just put in here. Let's drag it into the scene. It's a little bit on the big side, so I'm going to go ahead and go to my details panel and scale it down to 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and just rotate it. When you're doing it on the ground like that, make sure your height is zero. Sometimes it'll show up a little bit higher. Then I'm going to go ahead and just, just drag it over here a little bit and rotate it, make it where I want it to go. That looks good. Or good enough. Hey, it looks like he's got a blood wiener there. But um, So yeah, just put it wherever you want. And then take a look at it. Rah, I do my attack. <laughs> I told you, it's simple. I mean, I just made a custom blood sprite, um, uh, blood splatter in a couple seconds. Took, what, about a minute? to have it on the map from your graphics editor to the actual map in less than a minute.
Isn't she pretty? Let's see if her dress her. So I was trying to come up with what I wanted to do for... It's like whenever this guy does this grimacing rah thing, what kind of voice that I wanted to make and what kind of sound effect I wanted to create for that. And, you know, of course I want to do the 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 full... Whatever, that gruff, mean, I'm going to kill you voice, that dark, mean, deep, thundering voice. But then something in my brain just keeps saying, make about four or five different ones, make it do a random sound. Yeah, it's that easy. A lot of things that, that um, you can do in Unreal Engine 4 are sometimes a lot easier than what you think they are. So I want to do a Mike Tyson voice as one of the alternatives. So he may have five things that he says whenever he does that that roar, or like, or just a growl, or I'm going to kill you, or stay down, or whatever. And then I'm going to have like a pipsqueak Mike uh, Tyson voice. I think it's stay down. <laughs> you know, just say with that weird squeaky voice. You're like, what the hell was that? <laughs> you know, just so you add a little comedy in with the horror. So you gotta gotta make sure you you liven it up a little bit because you get too serious on things without a little bit of comedy and it games can get stale pretty quick. I mean, adding sounds in. A survival game kit. I love that survival game kit, but they've got so many sound bugs and errors on it. And what I've had to do is go through and fix all of their audio files um, so that they have proper attenuation. And I still got a bunch more to fix. Um, so my assets. Let's come in here and create a new folder. Audio. And I'm still all about sound triggers and ambience and so forth. Um, I go in my audio folder and. Let's see here. And audio nature. And grab that nature sound and bring it in here. It's probably a good one to work with. And that's just gonna give us our and I'll go ahead and let it play play. It's a little on the loud side while I'm looking for um, some other audio. Water, waterfall, magical sounds, spell casting sounds, lots of music. And again, music wise, if you're looking for menu music and that kind of stuff, um, yeah, I'll actually show you the website. I mean, I got it bookmarked, so Technoax, T E K N O A X E dot com, Technoax. Um, it's royalty free music and it's good stuff he writes all the stuff and he's got his own group, his own um, musicians and stuff like that too um, you want drama or you, you pick your theme and that kind of stuff and Halloween because we're doing a Halloween thing and you pick out one, click on it like, oh, how does this one sound you can actually get a YouTube preview and actually listen to it and he was like okay this is one that I want click on download and uh, when you download it make sure you, you check out his creative uh, uh, the, the license permission document that's actually included in, in my actual game project But um, and follow the creative commons it's you know simple and easy to do I also like to make sure that I put his logo in with my menus and stuff like that give him proper credit where, where credit is due especially since it's free you know <laughs> The least you can do, right? Um, something like that. Again, easier than what you think. Um, like say, for an example, I keep left clicking because they have that stupid mouse bug issue, which I'm gonna go ahead and fix really quickly. So I'm just gonna grab okay, a death animation, and I'm not even gonna bother to make an animation blueprint or anything. I'm going to go from the idle animation, it'll sit there for a couple seconds, and then it'll, the character will die, and this actual dead person right here, I actually made that from this animation, I actually saved that as an animation pose from that one right there, I just saved one frame out of that animation. So what we'll do here is, first off, I'm going to go into my character folder and 
character blueprints, go to my player base, and the first thing I want to do is event begin play. And I'm going to do set input to game only. Oh, I hate that bullshit with mouse problem. It only is a problem whenever it's actually in the editor. So from this we want to get what are we doing? Yeah, player controller. Um, so get our player controller reference and then I'm going to go ahead and set show mouse cursor leave it unchecked so it turns off the mouse cursor as soon as we go into the game no matter what and then I'm going to do this get all three of them right click collapse nodes and hide that fucking mouse cursor on startup you don't have to name it that by the way you can name it whatever you want I'm just old and grumpy as shit so and if you want to keep building shit off of that from your begin play what you gotta do is go into your your collapsed graph connect your end node to your output node there and then right, compile and save now when you go back and look at it again you now you have an output node you can continue building off of that so you don't have to put a sequence node in there to to have this hide the damn mouse um, cursor thing so sorry I had to do that because now whenever I go in here I don't have to left click to clear my mouse frickin cursor so we continue on with your question there is um, we want to start with a I'm just gonna make a, a rough character that's a, an actor I'm not even gonna make it a character blueprint or anything so it's gonna sit here and be doing this um, idle animation and then a few seconds later it'll do this death animation and then it will become this corpse for a few seconds and then it'll go away and there'll be a blood splatter where th that it was easier than it seems okay so I've got my NPCs that I created here I'm actually gonna go ahead and create a blueprint an actor we're just gonna call it sample and go into it and I'm gonna add a component which is going to be a skeletal mesh but so I don't have to be looking all over the damn place for that skeletal mesh I'm actually gonna come down here and find the one that I want and let's go with our fantasy characters characters we want to make that actually instead of being that girl we're gonna be the male peasant so I've selected it here I'm gonna go back into my blueprint and now I'm gonna add a component whenever I select skeletal mesh that mesh that I had selected out there is already here isn't that lovely so you hit compile and save now we can do another thing is we can actually go back and let's find our sprite the blood sprite that we just made come over here I'm gonna add a component and I wanna find the sprite Oh, getting old. I gotta crack my back. Not a problem. So let's go to Paper Sprite, Blood Sprite. There we go. And damn if it's not huge. So let's go ahead and, and while well, we're in, have it selected. Let's go ahead and scale it down to 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And we want to make sure that we rotate it. so that it's laying flat and it's going to be on the zero but the next thing we want to also do is come down here scroll down and uncheck visible so we turn off visibility for it go into our event graph and let's start off with and no I didn't even say with our, our thing right here we could actually set it up to where it's actually doing an animation um, let's actually give it um, collision of block all um, but right here in the animation we could actually tell it to use the um, regular animation blueprint I'm not because I want this to work with the other animation so instead I can come over here and select use animation asset and tell it to well I can't figure out which one I want to use so again I can come back over here go find the zombie idle 
zombie idle. So I'm going to select that one and then come back in here and hit the arrow and that's selected. So now it's actually doing this animation right off the bat. So I'm going to compile and save and let's go back into my NPC folder and I'm going to go ahead and drag him into the map. So now if we hit play, blah, we can do this. We can simulate that we're actually attacking. But see, he's doing it. He's kind of slowly bobbing his head around. You hear me talking to you? Yeah, you, right there. Smack you in the head. Um, so we're going to let him sit here and do his animation and just kind of bobble back and forth. We're going to give him... Yeah. So we're going to give it three seconds and we're going to make him die. So let's go into our event graph and on event begin play, let's um, do something. Uh, we want to make sure that... Uh, let's actually just start off with a delay and see what happens. Go with a delay of... Ow, shit. Let's give it a five second delay and then we want to get a reference to our character here and we want to play animation connect that off to here so then we want to go ahead and make sure we get the correct animation selected so we'll go to the correct animation folder for what we need which is zombie and which death animation was the correct one Let's hit play. Let's look at it. And damn it, I don't know why I hit the left mouse button. Uh, we want decent one, which is regular zombie death. Right there. So now we can come back into it, click the arrow, and it put that animation in there. So we're going to do animation death. How long is that animation? 2.966667. The four six is there. So let's put in another delay. Of two point nine six 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 seven. So the actual length of the animation itself for the death animation. And then we can go about this a couple different ways. Um, I've got my dead animation is an animation. It's only one frame, zero frames actually. And it's just, okay, they're dead. So let's actually see what happens if we tell it to do that animation. So if we do Control C and Control V, and let's go ahead and put that in there. Make sure we link back off to that for our target. So we're linking back off of our reference to our, our male peasant character. And the animation is dead. And do that. So it does the animation of death, and then it's now going to be dead. And then we want it to, we want the, the character to disappear and just leave the blood splatter, or lay there, be dead, the blood splatter happen, and then the corpse go away. Let's do it that way, make it complicated. Um, so now that they're dead, let's wait for a delay of two seconds, grab our blood sprite, and we want to set visibility and we want to make sure we check that box there. So now it's going to make the blood splatter visible and then we want to go ahead and let's do another delay of three seconds and we want to make the, the corpse go away. So we're just going to drag off from there and say destroy um, destroy actor. But we want to leave the blood sp sprite. So what's going to happen though is it's going to destroy everything. So let's take a look at it and actually see what it looks like. Damn it, why am I left clicking? It's habit. So Oh no, he's dying. Ugh. And now he's dead. And where's our blood splatter? We didn't get our blood splatter. Um, uh, 
everything else went correctly, but um, let's look at this again. We set the visibility to true. Um, and we made sure that it was not visible. Yeah, don't need to worry about that. Um, yeah, so it's, we, we, we don't have it visible, and we're telling it right here. Um, yes, there is a way of doing that. I suck at doing those, but um, you're actually creating an animation out of the blood splatter. Um, and it's actually going to be a particle effect. Same as a particle effect. Um, you would create that, and then you would you. What you're going to do as you start it off is tiny, like zero 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 one, and then over the course of three seconds, you make it scale up to zero point three or however big you want it to be, and it'll just slowly adjust its scale um, on all three axes. Yeah, so I mean, you, you could actually probably even clamp the value between. 0 0.2 and 0 0.8 so that it actually makes multiples um, you know you could actually do a, a lot of things with it um, just trying to figure out why my blood sprite didn't become visible let's actually go back in here and look at it one more time so our guy standing there idle and then suddenly oh damn he dies And I don't have my, my blood splatter. I'm going to actually do something weird here. And I'm going to jack him up in the air just a hair. To see if maybe my my blood splatter was too low. If the sprite was too low. So whatever it became visible. It just was. Yeah. And that's what it was. So all we got to do now is just. Let's go ahead and lower him back to the ground. And we need to go back into our viewport with our blood right here. Let's actually bring it up just to her. Um, let's actually make it visible again. And we need to bring snapping off. And let's bring it up just a hair. So it's just with the edge of the shoes. That should be right. Actually, uncheck visible. Compile and save. And let's take a look again. So that's what was happening. I, I, I thought I was doing it correctly, and I was. I just didn't have the sprite location high enough. So yeah, we could actually make the, the sprite bigger and move it back, too. So since we've got it in our character and we're hiding it, that's probably the best way to do it anyway. So let's bring it over here. And I'm going to turn visibility back on again. Let's change the actual scale. 0 0.6. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate it as well. Why not? Because he's falling backwards when he dies. So he's going to be about right in there. So I, it's a big splatter. So we'll 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 see how it looks. Um, I'm going to go back down and we turn off visibility. Coolio. Always love them extra subscribers. Try to get to that thousand mark. So okay, here we go. You're dead now. Blah! Okay, he falls over dead, and then blood. So yeah, it would be better if you actually wanted to create that a more realistic effect um, to make it actually see, we, we got rid of the whole thing. So if we wanted to actually create that sprite to stay there um, you really don't want that sprite to actually stay there forever. If you wanted to separate the visibility of the sprite from everything else um, you could actually come down here and Let's say you break this and sequence it and 
you could actually set a timer on the visibility of the sprite as well. So you came over here and did a sequence. You put that in here. And let's go ahead and break that link. So we, we want this to hold for two seconds and then perform this action to show our blood splatter. And it's going to destroy actors. It's going to destroy everything after that three seconds. So um, let's see if we can actually just do a reference from, and I'll, I'll grab another one, from our character. Drag that in here. Um, no, that won't work. Um, you could also go about it a different way as well. Let's uh, break that for just a minute. Let's hold off on our destroy actor thing. Let's keep our, our visibility of our blood sprite. And again, every problem can be figured out as long as you take the time to, to ask yourself the questions of what you want to do. So we've got set visibility node here so screw it let's control C control V let's shove it up here and we want to set visibility to not shown so let's try taking our our character and let's do that let's actually turn off the visibility of our character starting still gonna be visible in in the map until this point it'll become invisible and then Let's add a delay in of 10 seconds. And then let's do... At that point, um, destroy actor. And that should get rid of everything. Yeah, this will, this will also work with uh, the dyna dynamic characters or d dynamic combat system. So let's see if I broke my character this time. So what's going to happen is he will, here in just a second, he'll die, fall down, and then blick, blood will appear. And then he'll disappear. And then here in a little bit, the, uh, the blood splatter will disappear, and he'll be completely gone from the map, just like that. Nice, huh? So that whole setup right there, that whole sequence, you would just um, want to create that as a function inside your, your character. You could do it something like that, go through the whole uh, principle of doing that. And I'll see if I can figure out doing, just for the sake of it, the um, uh, this resizing the blood sprite with a, an effect. So that whole system right there can be added in as a function. So if you grab all this stuff here that we just did, we're setting it up off of event begin play. And that's what's going to happen when we start the map. But you could actually come over here and grab all of it, highlight it together. Yeah. So with all of it selected, we could actually then right click we got everything selected except for the event begin play so right click on it and collapse to function and failed uh, it doesn't like sequences never mind um, I'm sorry it doesn't like delays you can't put delays in a function so you could do it in, in any number of different ways but um, I'm going to leave it the way it is right here. So you could actually build it in your animation blueprint if you want to, but this is very simple. It's very easy to do, and it works. Um, I've never done. Let's see, create a flip book. I've never done that either. So. Um, right click here go to um, I don't have a damn clue but we'll figure it out 
animation not really it is but it isn't could be a paper flip book um, it's not AI not a blendable not regular blueprint um, definitely not gonna be media miscellaneous perhaps um, camera animation those are kinda cool to work with I suck at it but they're cool to work with uh, foliage type data tables um, forest feedback attenuation I don't remember. Um, no, it's not a br blueprint. Um, there was, um, it's like when you're, you're looking at effects. So I'm just going to go over here to um, Nature Pack, FX. Particle systems. Um, it's very similar to that. Let's see something here. Where the hell would particle systems be for creating? A, I think there's a plugin you have to activate. I don't have it activated, so it's not going to show the Niagara and that kind of stuff. But let's go ahead and, and I'll grab the effects here. I'm going to go in here and we'll just say... I don't know, it doesn't matter which one I open up. This is the butterflies. So essentially, you're going to have to create um, an effect. And this isn't what I'm looking for. Um... I mean, it's not a matinee actor either. Um, it's not in the cinematics like add matinee, uh, or there is some some cool shit you can do with um, adding um, add, adding matinee actors, but it's not the effects. It's not what I'm looking for. Um, I'll think of it, and I'll have to come back to that and revisit that. But essentially, what it is is. Um, I wonder, can you do it in a widget? Let's grab an image and blood. So we've got the image. We could scale it up in here. Um, I believe you can do it in this. Anchor it to the center. You'd want to figure out what your image size is going to be. I'm going to make it 300 by 300. And then positioning, I'm just going to put it at negative 150, negative 150. So it's dead square in the center. Um, and there is a... special effects now that's background blur there is a way that you can actually take that and create an animation for that I would have looked in primitive I know it's not in panel um, optimization no I definitely know it's not in there no it's not going to be a list extra no um, spin box what the hell is that uh, there was a way of actually creating animation with inside here oh right here <laughs> duh um, animation click it in there bloody and with the animation 
timeline. So what you're going to want to do then is add a track and it's called image 45. And then you're going to want to not necessarily visibility we have that on there you could actually do this on visibility and actually change it to where it goes from invisible to visible and it scrolls in or it pop it comes in with opacity you're gonna turn the opacity on and off um, like render opacity I believe would be what you'd want to do there and you want it to be in here you set the, the timeline effect of at one second that it takes to do this and then you could change color and opacity that kind of stuff too but uh, let's try render opacity and then at one second yeah, I, I've never done this before. I've seen it done before, but you could actually do it this way. And essentially, what you're trying to do is get it to um, you add keys to it, registration keys to it, so that um, yeah, I, I really suck at doing this. So I'm just kind of trying to figure it out myself. So add a key there, and then come back to one second, add a key there. So what we're going to try to do is, at this one right here, look at our appearance, um, opacity, let's make this zero, and then right here, let's make the opacity 0.5, and right here, we'll keep it at 1. So what will happen is, the render opacity, is there, let's try playing. We want it to go from here where it's not visible. Render opacity of zero. And then progressively we want it to get to 0.5. And then we want it to go all the way to full. So I'm not doing it correctly, but you're on this is the right track to get there. To set it up in a widget and you're going to change the opacity of it as you go and it'll go from invisible to visible by the end so i just got it wrong <laughs> you know i don't know for sure how to do it so let's actually make it go over two seconds So yeah, two seconds, and then at about one second there. It's not saving what I'm trying to do here, so let's actually bring it back to zero. If we hit play, we want zero, half, one. So this should be at this keyframe here. I assume that I'm doing this right, but hell, I don't know. Zero and one. Yeah, I'm definitely not doing it right. See, it's not even showing up right there now. But if you were to do it like that, then um. At that point, all you would have to do is go into your your thing here, where it's actually telling it to make the blood sprite. You could actually go into your add a component and add in a widget, and the widget itself that you're looking for, you come right over here to um, which widget selected. Well, 
let's see. I'm just going to add a widget in here. It's the same thing if you want to add like the player name above their head and stuff like that. You could add that information to the actual widget. And space widget class um, player info, whatever. Um, but you, you get the idea. Is you can actually then put put that in there, rotate it around, get it in the spot you want to, and then whatever it calls that event, you can tell it to play the widget, and it'll play that widget. Or you can set the visibility of the widget. You can do all kind of shit like that. So you're just adding components to it. It's again once you get the animation correctly for the um, the blood to spread out, then you would just make reference to it there where we we tell it to now show the blood splatter that's the point where you would tell it to do that particular growing blood uh, I'll, I will actually make that functional I just I'm drawing a blank right now I got a lot of shit on my mind right now so that's cool we have a death animation system that did not in involve any kind of animation blueprint structure or whatever else it could be applied to anything um, if I wanted to do the same thing to my player and say hit the 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 B key and it or D key or whatever key I wanted to put on there I could come in here to my sample and all the stuff that we did here we're gonna have to copy and paste but we're gonna have to make and add the blood sprite and all that shit to it as well you just add that to your player character it's like with the, the blood sprite our player base just like we did with um, hitting the left mouse button to do the attack it's the same principle I can come over here and right click I don't know what to use so keyboard and scroll up here let's use the B key we'll scroll Roll up here and find B as in Bravo. So now when we hit the B key, we want to um, what we're using here zombie death animation. So since right here we're just referring to the character here, I'm going to copy and paste this information in right here and paste that in here now I'm gonna have to go to here my mesh grab a reference to that and we want to connect that to target we need to stop the player also if they're walking so we would do the same thing as up here. We would deactivate uh, character movement. So I can actually grab those two. Control C and Control V, and we need to put that in in line here. So we're just gonna do that and drag that in there and grab our character reference and grab it, throw it back up there. and connect it in line so when we press the B key we're going to deactivate our movement and we're going to play the death animation and then the exact length of the animation later we're going to play the dead animation and then we can call our our sprite since we don't have that sprite in there we can just go back and find it and add it in really quickly and in the blood sprite player base make sure nothing is checked add component sprite paper sprite blood sprite no problem and we need to viewport and again we had it at 0 0.6 0 0.6 0 0.6 now let's go, let's go with point 5.5.5 and drop it down so 
So we actually want that to be at the bottom of our capsule collision because that's where we're going to be standing. So probably going to have to come back in here and move it around a little bit. But let's get it functional first. Go back to our event graph. And we did our dead animation, our delay. And from there, I'm going to just copy and paste. Control C and Control V. However, we're going to have to make some changes here because we're cheating. Go to here and delete that and grab a reference to our mesh and connect that to there. So we can turn off visibility of our mesh. Go back to our blood sprite, turn off visibility there, compile, save, and what did I break? Oh, because I didn't put the reference to the mesh to here. All right, so let's try that out. Now we're running around and we'll watch Home Cheese here do his death. Falls over dead. Cool. Now he's dead. Blood sprays everywhere. And then he disappears and then the blood disappears. Funny enough, but oh, oh, we're dead. Oh, there's blood. We didn't move the blood, so we need to do that real quickly. Go to our viewport. Go to our blood sprite. Turn it visible so we can see what we're doing, and move it here. doesn't have to be perfect it's just good enough if I want to be perfect I could actually change the animation asset that I'm using to the dead animation and position it perfectly but this is gonna be good enough for now for testing porpoises die lay there be dead now go away after your blood splatters now you go away and here in a couple seconds the blood goes away Now, same thing with our character. We die, we fall back, uh, we're dead. Then blood pops out. Then our character goes away, and then our blood goes away. Mm, let's make it even more cool. We're dead, so we need to respawn, right? We've got to come back from the dead. We can't just always be dead, because that sucks donkey nuts. So I'll make us undead. Huh. That's an option. I can make us undead. How about that? We just died, so we need to come back as a, a dead person, right? So, let's actually find something that's dead. Um, who here is dead? You know what? I know what I do want, and I want a skeleton. And I don't have a skeleton in there. Hmm. So, again, I'm gonna add another asset pack in really quickly, and because I'm, I'm, I want to be a skeleton. We're dead. We need to be something else. All right. Which one has the best skeleton? Um, pirates. I think Pirates has the best skeleton, the actual skeleton. Um, pirates. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, let me grab Polygon Pirates. Yeah, I don't have this one set up correctly. Re redo that one. Uh, let's see here. Polygon Pirates drops you in the content folder. Yes, I got most of mine from their store instead of from the marketplace. 
So, polygon pirates. We want uh, mesh characters, peoples, and where my homie at? There we go. The skeleton. So, we are currently the witch. We are going to actually change that right now. And I want to be somebody different. I've been playing the witch for a couple little run throughs, so whatever. We could be the queen, we could be pretty. Um, now, before I start changing that, um, let's go ahead and do the usual. Let's go ahead and activate all of these characters, even though the only one I really wanted was the skeleton for right now. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. Did anybody tell you to do anything weird? No. You just keep doing what I'm telling you to do, and I won't have to shoot you in the face. Or screw them. So I just want to right-click, Skeleton, Assign Skeleton, go to the Poly Skeleton. And they have their own little rapier and English captain. So, yeah, anytime you see that pop up, just click OK like that. Just click OK, it'll automatically add them in. Going through all this when all I really wanted was the skeleton. But if I don't do it now, I will forget and we'll try to use one of the other characters and suddenly I'm not able to and because it's not retargeted and yeah. If I don't do it, I wish that I had taken the, the five minutes to actually do it or three minutes or whatever it takes. But it doesn't matter. And on the Cindy Studios Polygon assets, it doesn't really matter. You can do this with every single one of their, their polygon um, assets. You can retarget all of their characters except for the the trolls, the big tall guys over there. Those guys need to be, have their own skeleton. However, they can still use the same animation blueprints. You just have to animate them separately from the rest. Yeah, the giant guys. You can use the same animation blueprint and retarget that same animation blueprint that you're using for everything else. Except for the fact that you've got to do them separately. Because if you don't do them separately, what's going to happen is when you open up a character utilizing one of the giants, they're going to be folded in half backwards. The back of their feet are touching the back of their head. There's a way to fix that, but it's just faster to go ahead and... Yeah, and that's the thing is, it, with that simplicity factor of being able to retarget every single solitaire one of their character um, skeletal meshes to use the same freaking skeleton and same freaking animation blueprint and all that, it makes putting a project together with multiple asset packs freaking simple. You do this for all the, the skeletal um, you know, um, meshes, for all of their, their asset packs, combine them to one single skeleton, you make one animation blueprint system for the, your, your project, and it covers everything. All those characters now will work perfectly. Like I said, the only exception is going to be the giant guys from the, the Fantasy Rivals pack. Yay, we're done. So, save all... So now we got those. Now we can get back to what I was actually doing here. So we want to actually be... Oh, what the hell? Let's be... Um, Blackbeard. So go to our player base, go to our mesh, and hit that. That's a deckhand. I did, did want to be a deckhand. That's Blackbeard. If I select that... That's not it. It's just scrolling through the damn list. What the hell's wrong with you? Um, okay, whatever. Blackbeard, and we need to go ahead and do the... Um, it didn't automatically change the um, the material, but that are no problem. So, compile and save. Now we are a pirate, so that's just changing our, our physical appearance for right now. We're 
Captain Hook here, running around, do our thing. We can rah, do our swing attack, and we can die. And book, and poof. And then a few seconds later, we'll poof again. And then let's go ahead and respawn our character. Since we're dead now, we need to respawn and become a skeleton. So, and I'm going to collapse all this stuff into a death system. But for now, let's go ahead and roll with it. So, on our sequence, this, we don't have to worry about it. It's just doing its thing, and it's good. And then, we're going to go back to here. We're going to destroy the actor. Um, we don't have to destroy the actor, because we don't want to remove us from the game completely. So, after our 10-second delay, we're going to... Um, let's actually do this. Control-C and Control-V. And we are going to connect that and connect that and uncheck that. So we're going to turn off the visibility after 10 seconds for our blood sprite. And then we want to grab these two guys, Control-C and Control-V. We want to turn our visibility back on. And since we deactivated our character movement we need to grab our character movement drag that in here we need to activate our character movement but in between there I guess it doesn't really matter where we put it it's gonna happen all pretty much at the same time we want to set our world location to a new location so um, let's get a cube let's size it to 0.1 let's put it at 0 0 0 so this is going to be our respawn point so when we die we're going to come back to right here So we want to set actor location. Location, we can go ahead and just manually put it in here. We want to be at least like 120 so that we're actually going to land on top of it. Let's actually put it at um, 150. Not 15, 150. Dumbass. Alright, compile and save. So it doesn't matter where we actually die. So if we die now, ugh, we're dead. Fall over. Go through our whole sequence. There's our blood. We vanished. The blood will vanish. And we will then reappear on there. And we didn't set our visibility correctly. We're there. Um, we forgot. Set visibility to true. Dumb ass. So let's try that again. Hit B. Go through our death sequence. We just got killed. We've been murdered. So we can still look around and check our stuff. We can't move, but we can move our mouse around to look at our corpse and our blood splatter. And um, All right, so we're almost there. That looks good, though, doesn't it? So last thing we're going to do is we're good there, and we need two character movement, I think, and... No, um, mesh. Anim instance. Set animation instance class. We forgot to do that. Back to unarmed. Because that's what we were using before was the unarmed animation. And now we should be correct. 
So we can run around, we can do our thing here, smack someone in the head, oh no, we just got killed, bang, we're dead, fall over, and sploosh, blood comes out, and then we disappear, our blood splatter will disappear, let's change our view around a little bit, and then we can respawn, we're back in this point, and we can do our thing, we can, we're alive again, yay, we just respawned, but I want to be a skeleton. That's not good enough. So we died. We got to come back as a skeleton, right? So, and this shouldn't matter how many times we friggin' die. So let's go ahead and grab reference to our mesh and set skeletal mesh. Connect it. Yeah, this is the the simplest respawn systems. You you're not actually destroying anything, you're whatever. You're just telling your character to be invisible and then visible again in a new location. But this time we're also um we're we're just telling our character to die and then as soon as we die, we're not going to be our, our ourself again because we just died. Oh no. Ugh. Dead go through our sequence, blech, blood, and then poof, and then a few seconds later we're going to poof again, and then, uh-oh, we're dead, so we're a skeleton. Ah, oh, sucks to be me, I'm a dead skeleton, but what happens if we die again? Ugh. Well, in theory we shouldn't have blood come up after we die when we're a skeleton, because we don't have any blood. So... To fix that, it can be even more complicated because skeletons don't have blood. Um, you could actually go in here. I love it. It is so simple to do as well. Um, we could actually set up a variable and um, uh, shit um, has died. We'll see if we can make this simple. Um, so the blood splatter right here, when we're telling it to go visible, instead, let's go ahead and put in a branch node. Unfortunately, we need to grab everything right here. Just drag it over just a wee bit. So we can actually come back in here, put this branch node connect this to here and on true um, no 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 um, on false if we have not died previously then we can do this if it's true then we need to bypass the visibility thing here for the blood sprite so now we can actually go directly into this so let's actually move this down so we can see that we we're doubled up here so on true um, and let's go ahead and put it at the end here I'm going to hold down the alternate key, left click, drag this in here, so we have a set node, and let's do that, has died, yes. So we make sure that we're, we're for sure setting that variable um, to yes. So let's try that. I may have just broke it, but I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. So we'll play, come in here, and ugh, we died. So since we just died, we need to have blood. Now let's get rid of the corpse, and let's go ahead and get rid of the blood. And as soon as we do, we respawn, we're back alive again. So now we can run around, we're all happy and stuff. We're going to die again. Oh no, we died as a skeleton. Do we get any blood? No. We just go back to the respawn, and now we can continue playing. Rut row, and... We missed out on something here. 
we set our visibility off there. Something happened. Um. We're turning off visibility of our mesh. Let's actually take our our whole blood thing. I'm gonna break all this stuff. And we got our blood sprite. I'm gonna reposition it up here. Um yeah, I'm just totally screwing shit up. So let's actually come bring this over here and break that link as well. And let's unbreak that. Let's get that back down over here. And from our sequence node, let's add another pin in. So from there, we want to set visibility for our blood and shit, our blood sprite. If we are, if we have died before, then we do nothing. So if we have not died, then we can turn on visibility of the blood. And from here, we can actually connect that. Um, 10 second delay though. I'm gonna... Leave that in here. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's try that. I'm probably breaking the hell out of everything here, but... I want the blood sprite to not happen if we're a skeleton. So what we're going to do here is on this sequence we're going to set our visibility of our character to invisible and at this point we've died. We're, we're turning off our character and then also at the same time is checking to see if we've got our blood and if if we need our blood or not. Um, so if we've died before then it controls the visibility of the blood on it won't matter here because it's it's already if it's already off you're telling it just to stay off so again I probably broke the hell out of this so let's see what happens all right so I die And then here's my blood. Corpse goes away. The blood should go away and I should respawn. And now I'm a skeleton, so I can run around as a skeleton. Yay, I'm all kind of happy and stuff. I'm, I can jump. There's no issues with anything else right now. We're still good. Just want to wait for about 10 seconds to make sure that I didn't have any other issues from other delays. So now we're running around. Oh yes, uh, crap, we died again. But since we're a skeleton, we don't need blood because we don't have any. So now my, my corpse goes away and then I need to be able to respawn. And there we go. I respawned and we're good to go. So let's just run around for a couple seconds, make sure there's no problems. And that system works. So there, there we go. We now have a system to where what happens if we get killed? Oh, shit. Uh, we turn into a skeleton. Let's actually go back and play through one more time. So we're running around. We're Blackbeard here. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, you can't do anything to me. I'm not afraid of you. Smack. Oh, no, we died. So now that we've died, uh, blood just came gushing out of our ears. And and our, he just smashed our corpse. It went away. And he smashed in my camera. Okay, now I'm back. But hell, I'm not a Blackbeard anymore. I've died. So now I'm a skeleton. Oh, shit. We can't have that. I run around. Yeah. Paybacks as hell. Smack. I can hit you, too. Oh, no. But you, you're, you're stronger. 
Oh, shit. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that's a problem. We need to fix that so we can't just spam the, uh, the death key. But not really a problem because, honestly, I'm not going to have this bound to a key anyway. Whenever I die, I just, I'm dead, you know. You wouldn't want to just... We're not creating a suicide key here. We're just testing the functionality of our death function, our death system. So when you die, you respawn as a skeleton, and then, oh no, I, uh, uh, I'm i dead again. So when you die as a skeleton, you don't get a blood splatter because you don't have any blood. So that works. So then, after you die, your body goes away, and poof, you come back, you're able to play it again. If you really wanted to be cool about it, you could actually throw in a, um, a particle effect of poof, of smoke or whatever, that kind of Shiite. But we got a respawn point, and how about this? So, and the respawn point, what if you didn't want it to be 000 right there on this pad? What if you want it to be over here? You just give the coordinates of whatever you want. But what if you want to respawn where you're standing? Um, honestly, you can take and where your respawn location is. All your death animation, all your other stuff, and here where you're setting your actor location is where your respawn point is. Instead, you could just go ahead and create a variable called respawn point. And there's a couple ways you can do this, and you just want to make this into a vector. Then compile, save, and now you can actually input locations for that right there. Um, uh, if you want to manually set a, a spawn point as I'm playing okay now I'm over here if I died right here you could actually say that okay now that I've died I want this to be my respawn location so what you can do is go ahead and take your respawn point and connect it up there there's nothing put into it right now at all but what you want to do is whenever you are all the way at the beginning of this death event you would just add in something very simple alternate left click drag into the scene and you're setting your spawn point okay but how are you setting your spawn point you want to get a reference to your mesh and um, yeah, keep it simple stupid um, get world location so it'll just find the location of where you are whenever you died and it will set your respawn point to that location so if that's how you want your your character to to play, you're running around, ugh, you're doing things, you're you're killing monkeys and zombies and, and everything else. Our respawn point was here, but now what if we're over here? And oh no, we just died. It just grabbed my location of where I was standing to create my my new respawn point. So if that's how you want to set up your respawn point, then. As soon as we respawn, we respond at our location. But what if I come over here and, oh crap, I just died over here. Am I going to respond at 000 or am I going to respond back over there? Nope, I'm actually going to respond right here where I died so that I can keep right on going. I honestly wouldn't do that. I would set a respawn point um, through the map. And honestly, one more quick thing, and then I'm getting out of here and taking a break for a little bit what if you wanted to create a um, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put it in temporary location probably gonna delete it so create a blueprint actor and if you're building a, uh, a a game where you want your character when they get to a certain point on the map it automatically saves that as a respawn point respawner you go into it and 
Now I'm going to add in a component which is going to be a cube. I wouldn't do this in the map. You can actually turn the visibility off once you, you place it in the map. But I'm just going to set that in the map and then I'm going to add in a box collision. And I'm going to make it... You asshole. 1.5 1.5 5 and 0.5 doesn't matter on, on the box collision itself um, you just need to have it in this area I'm gonna have it set on on this compile save event graph delete all this garbo clear right click on your box collision on component begin overlap and you want to cast to your player when your player steps on it, you want to set respawn point and then you want to go ahead and get a reference to your box or reference to your cube, either one, and get world location. Connect that in and compile save. Now it saves that variable into your character as a spawn point. So you're you're running through your map and that will be that. So let's actually go back into our player base. And here I'm gonna get rid of that what we just did here. Um, and I'm just gonna reconnect that. So I'm not going to change anything, but I am going to go back over here to where my current, actually, we've got respawn point is currently set up inside here. I'm going to come back over here and set that 000 and 150. So compile and save. So we have a default location now for our spawn point. So as we're running around, we haven't gone over that pad right there. This is going to be our respawn point in the center. If we die now, we're going to respawn back in the middle of the map at our 00150 location. So we die, go through our whole sequence, and then poof, and come on, come on. There we go. So now we respawn here, and we respawn in the center of the map. If we die again, we're going to keep doing that but if I come over here walk through this box and now I come over here and I die oh no I'm dead when I respawn now I'm gonna respawn at that trigger that I, I put over there so as soon as I respawn there we go although we are gonna have to adjust the height level just a wee bit so, um, and not in our player base, we actually need to go back into our respawner. And since we're setting our <laughs> respawn point to that, um, excuse me, I'm trying to do something. Shit just locked up on me. Eat a dick. Thank you. Um, so what we can actually do here is go to our viewport and since we're getting a reference to our box collision let's actually look in our viewport get our box collision and since it's at that point we want to set this to be at roughly 150 but let's go ahead and resize it to 1 so that we're still going to pass through it Compile and save. So that should be high enough now. So that if, oh, yeah, I didn't mean to attack there. So if we run through here, we set our spawn point to that location now. Doesn't matter where we go on the map. When we die, bang, we're dead. And ugh, we got blood. Oh, no. Nasty. Okay, and poof. We respawn 
at that location. So it works. So now that is our respawn location until we're running around and we change it by adding another one in. If we had multiple spread throughout the map, then you could set that respawn point anywhere you want and anytime you, you ran across there, it would automatically go in and reset your your respawn point to that new location. So you can have 500 of them in your map if you want to. So you're constantly having respawns wherever you go. So if you know that your player is getting ready to go into a bad room, get their ass kicked, you want the spawn point to be outside the room or somewhere. So as soon as you, you walk in there, you can change it by that trigger. All right. That's good enough. We're going to kill our character one more time to prove that he's dead. He's our skeleton. But since he's already a skeleton, he's just going to stay a skeleton. So there you go. And poof. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll be on Discord back and forth. I'm going to take a break from streaming. This is over the two hour mark. I need to eat something really quickly and I'll get back to work. Alright guys, thanks for watching and we will see you soon.